I'm actually not the biggest fan of social media. The funny part is, and the funny part was, social media to me is actually not a hobby. Oh, uh, what the fuck? Hey guys, so I got asked a great question uh, recently about how did Bespoke come about? How did I know I wanted to turn a hobby into a business? Now the funny part is, and the funny part was, social media to me is actually not a hobby. Um, it might come as a, a what the fuck um, to a lot of people, but I'm actually not the biggest fan of social media. And I think when you're in it every day, it loses that bit of, um, whatever um and especially for me i think because all my friends and all my networks are like sales people or business people um and everyone's running ads that's just for me a couple of platforms have just become like it's, it's a marketing platform which is why i'm loving TikTok um at the moment but um yeah so the comment or the uh, the message or the um combo uh, i think it was a conversation um when you know how did when did i know it was time for bespoke to become a business or how did i get bespoke um to become a business. Well, I was in, uh, I was coming home from Ballina um, uh, with mum and dad. Uh, we'd been up there for Christmas. I had a message on LinkedIn uh, from a Double Bay agent asking how much I would charge to catch up uh, and go over. You know, she wanted to boost her um, social media presence uh, for that year. And I think that was 2018 at the time. Um, wanted to boost, and I was still a sales agent selling property at that point. Um, and she said, you know, like, how much do I charge? And I was like, you know, I'll, you pay for the coffee, I'll do it for free. Um, anyway, I had a chat, so mind you, we not long left Ballina either. And I was going to mum and dad's place in Newcastle, so that's about a seven hour drive or so. So we had seven hours and we just threw some ideas back and forward. And I remember dad, mum or dad said, why don't you charge 150 bucks? And I was like, no one's gonna pay for me to hear me talk about social media. I mean, I'd done really well. I'd got some really high accolades within the real estate industry. Um, and that meant a lot to me, but I thought no one's gonna pay me. But then over the course of that trip home, I actually did some research as far as to see who was actually doing this stuff for the real estate industry. And there was nobody. I mean, mind you, we're going back three years now. Every man and their dog now thinks they're a bloody social media marketing guru, especially in the real estate industry. Um, but there was no one doing it back then. So I actually didn't end up meeting um, with the guy. I think it just fell through. But I, it started, uh, I noticed there, a niche in the market. I noticed there was a need for it. I noticed I was good at it. So I just started playing with a couple of things. Now, by the time I got home or got back to mum and dad's in Newcastle, I'd had an Instagram page created, Facebook page created. Um, the name Bespoke didn't come till about four months later. Like I said, I was still listing and selling property. Um, I'd started to kind of drip feed the business again. I wasn't really putting a lot of time and effort into it in that probably that first six months um, because it just wasn't, I was a sales agent. You know, this was just well, make a couple of bucks, make a couple of bucks, <laughs> who cares? But then I think the more that I started putting it out there or the more people started to know what I was doing and knew my background, knew my story, knew that I was in the industry, knew that I knew what I was talking about. Um, and especially with some of the results I'd had um, listing and selling property on social, they started reaching out to me to the point where the business got so busy, I actually walked away from my real estate career um, because this had picked up and, and was taking off. So it wasn't so much I wanted to create Bespoke as a business, it's just something that naturally evolved. Um, and now I've had, or you know, two years ago or so, uh, and when I actually first really started to take Bespoke seriously and look at it as an actual business and not just a side hustle or a hobby, um, a lot of people said, well, gee, you know, you took your time, you should have been doing this for ages, and that's probably right, but it wasn't the time. Um, and I think everything happens for a reason. So my suggestion out there is, I think the reason Bespoke did so well is number one, credibility in the industry. I am an agent, I'm still on the tools, I know social, I've produced, I've performed um, in the social industry as well as the real estate industry. So. I don't know, I think it, it came down to, yes, 
when I, I, I got into the business mind frame, yes, I wanted it to be a business, but at the end of the day, I got into this to help people. Um, and I love watching people get success and all that kind of stuff. So guys, I think that's, that's probably the key. Um, it was never about making money. Um, it was literally to help people. And then I think that kind of came through and yeah. yeah. So to answer your question, um, I knew I wanted it to become a business on April 4th, 2018 when we registered the business name, even though I started it on January 2nd.